Over 2,000 people joined a summer pastime with traditional ways of fishing at a lake in Amnad Charoing recently. The Nongkut Nasang Lake is located at the conjunctions of three northeastern provinces of Amnad Charoing, Ubon Ratchatani, and Yasoton. Each fisherman entered the race with but 50 admission and is allowed to use only throwing net and dip net. Some use bare hands to wrestle with the fish. It was a rather friendly gathering of locals, many showed off their catches with big smiles. Local administration of Amnat Charoing's Hua Tapan district, who organized the fishing event, says the summer fun activity is aimed to promote traditional livelihood of the people. Village head Virapan Bachali said catching fish in water could ease summer heat and stress. For 50 baht admission, people could catch fish for food or to sell. The administration says the proceeds from the event will be used to improve the logical system of the lake. An ancient ordination ceremony is still practiced by Dong Pradok Komtap village in Pisanulok who carry on this tradition as part of their post-harvest celebration until this day. The ordination ceremony or Mahe is an ancient ceremony to prepare a man who will be ordained as a Buddhist monk. The ordination usually lasts three to four days and is performed in the fourth month of a Thai lunar calendar. The Nak is a person who will be ordained as a Buddhist monk riding on a horse statue carried by ten men will be walking in procession on the rhythm of folk music. The procession will start from the temple to the Nak's home on the first day and reverse the route on the second day. The Nak's relatives and friends will cheer him on as the wobbling procession is performed. The fund and challenge of the ceremony is for the Nak to balance himself on the horse ride while trying to stay focused on sighting the cannon. This unique ceremony has been carried on through generations by the Dong Pradok Krom Tap people, whose ancestors migrated from Rachaburi province in western Thailand. Over 1,000 people in Chiang Mai held a dance parade at a pedestrian walkway in a unique health promotion campaign recently. Chai Prakan Municipal Administration has introduced the activity providing dance instructors to communities in other districts of Chiang Mai since late last year. Blending recreational and cultural values of the dance, the organizers hope that the dancing activity will become part of a healthy lifestyle. After attending classes for a week, the participants, young and old, were invited to join the lively parade. They cruised along the pedestrian walkways, dotted with stalls selling healthy food, organic produce and homegrown products. Groups of housewives, social interests and students from Fang and Mei Ai districts entertained themselves in the parade. Let's Enliven Our City project, organized by Brunei Municipal Department, hope to attract more locals and tourists to visit and enliven Banda Sri Begawan besides upholding the government's intention to encourage youth to be involved in entrepreneurship. The opening ceremony was officiated by Dr. Awang Haji Manaf bin Haji Metusin, Permanent Secretary at the Ministry of Home Affairs. The event continued with donation presentation to the trainers of Pusat Bahagia, people with special needs, orphans and fired victims. The project involved 60 local entrepreneurs. The former capital of Vietnam, Hue, has a rich cultural heritage, most notably its citadel, pagodas and royal tombs. However, many of these places were destroyed during the series of wars in the 20th century. Since reunification day, Hue's articles of heritage have been restored 
preserved and developed as a model for preservation the Asia-Pacific region. Hue was the old imperial capital of Vietnam under the Nguyen dynasty from the early 19th century to the mid-20th century. Nowadays, only 300 buildings of the original city are still standing, as over 1,100 buildings were destroyed during the war. In order to save Hue's architectural heritage, a conservation campaign has been executed with a contribution of locals and the international community. Thanks to these efforts, much of Hue's historic places had been restored and has since been recognized globally. According to UNESCO, Hue is leading the way in terms of heritage preservation in Vietnam. The World Heritage Committee suggested that Hue should be upheld as a role model for preservation efforts in the Asia-Pacific region. With that role, they will provide training and preservation techniques for other countries in the region. The preservation and enhancement of cultural heritage makes a huge contribution to the socio-economic development of Thua Tien Hu province, especially in the tourism sector. The tourism industry here accounts for over 50% of the province's GDP. In fact, the entire development of Thua Tien Hu is intrinsically linked to the value it has placed in its traditional inheritance. The revival of Hugh's heritage is a contribution of the government, local people and international community. It's obvious that there is a lot of work to do in the future, but restoring of traditional sites of heritage contributes to the socio-economic development of Hugh. Over the past 40 years, Tua Tien Hu has done a great job in preserving its valuable historic legacy, both for Vietnam and the world. This effort will become a template for others in the future. How prepared is Singapore in the fight against Ebola? Well, scientists and technicians at DSO National Laboratories are all ready for testing of samples from suspected patients, much like what it did during the SARS outbreak. The SARS outbreak, which hit Singapore in 2003, has been a good learning experience, and staff working in these labs are ready to take on the Ebola challenge if it hits home. Well, it builds up my confidence level because, I mean, at that time, Nobody knows what SARS is and everybody was like gowning up everything. So now I'm more trained in this kind of environment. Staff get fully suited up before coming into contact with any Ebola samples. They then enter a negative pressure room where suspected samples are handled. Here, airflow is one directional. Fresh air flows in while contaminated air is pushed out through a vent. A sample is opened in a biosafety cabinet by a medical staff, while the other person is responsible for moving the sample to various machines for testing. Plasma is then extracted from the sample and heated to 60 degrees Celsius for an hour. This inactivates the Ebola virus, which is sensitive to heat. The remaining genetic solution is then treated and split into two further samples. Each sample is then tested in a different lab so that results can be cross-checked. Touring the facility, Singapore's Defence Minister Ng Eng Hen says the lab staff is the most important group in the fight against the disease. I'm uh, reassured after this visit that we have very professional uh, scientists, technicians. The last 10 over years, they have built up significant capabilities in the way they characterize, identify not only known agents but unknown agents uh, and this was put to the test uh, during SARS. The DSO National Laboratories have been designated the National Ebola Testing Facility since August last year. So far only two suspected cases have been tested. As part of the commemoration of the 47th ASEAN Day, the Department of Foreign Affairs of the Philippines organized an exhibit called Woven Identities, Clothing Traditions of ASEAN, 
to showcase the various weaving techniques and skillful embroidery of all ASEAN dresses as a symbol of identity, tradition and heritage. Baju Kurong and Baju Charu Melayu for Brunei Darussalam, Khmer or Khmer for Cambodia, Kabaya and Just Batawi for Indonesia, Sin and Salong for Lao DPDR, Baju Kurong and Baju Melayu for Malaysia, Pawar and Tikepon for Myanmar, Turno and Barong for the Philippines, Pranakan Ang for Singapore, Fanung and Swa Prarat Chatan for Thailand, Audai and Augam for Vietnam. The exhibit is just in line with the promotion of greater awareness of ASEAN integration in 2015. The popularity of the natural fabrics and organic materials like those used in the exhibit does not wane. Ms. Dita Sadikun of the Philippines, distinguished designers, uses such materials for her products, which not only are very popular in the country, but are also recognized in the ASEAN region and other parts of the world like New York and Paris. I've been um, focusing on the banaka, which is the uh, banana abaca. It's actually our local indigenous material. I also use pinalino, the sedalino, and also the abel iloko. Uh, and then I've also dabbled with the mangyan fabrics. So from the north to the south, I've really tried to experiment with so many different uh, textures and local weaves. She provided the national dresses for the Philippines representatives in the 6th ASEAN quiz regional level who won first runner-up in the competition. Uh, we are now selling our bags and our wraps to them. So also we've showed in different countries like especially some parts of Europe, US and Asian countries. We've reached Singapore, Bangkok, uh, Indonesia, Japan, most especially, and Hong Kong. I'd like to invite everyone to please come um, see my works here at the Wilson Street Showroom. And we, you can also check our website on uh, ditachannel.com and see the and view our different products online. Traditional wear will always be part of the cultures in the ASEAN region. The annual A-Press Citation event of the Cultural Center of the Philippines was attended by the media to inform the public about the various cultural activities that Philippines have and its importance to the country. Since 2015 is the Association of Southeast Asian Nation Integration Year, dance artists from different countries perform their respective cultural dances, including Cambodia, Indonesia, as well as the Ramon Obusan Folkloric Group from the Philippines. The Minister Councillor of the Embassy of the Republic of Indonesia was also present during the event. As the members of the ASEAN states continue to uphold each other, the ASEAN Integration 2015 will be successful.